Hi, this is Ben and John from Orsi and Verd. Uh, we're in our studio just outside of Manchester. And we are breaking down our track Indica, which is on Yoshi Toshi. <laughs> Um, we got, how this kind of started was, we got given a Pioneer DJ Torai's SP16 by the good folks at Pioneer and um, rather than building everything in, uh, in Logic, we started off kind of getting a groove together in this uh, Torai's uh, bit of kit and it was kind of an old school way of doing it because you're building, uh, you're building like an old drum machine. So we loaded it in with samples and sounds of stuff that we've used in the past and uh, pretty quickly uh, got, um, got a shaker and stuff going um, and then from there we were adding our, our kick that we've used on a few tracks before um, and a hat that we've used on a few, few tracks before again and it was kind of ace to be able to go uh, into the old school way of thinking rather than building everything on the screen we were building it in here and then we exported those ideas as uh, as loops if you will uh, into logic so yeah with the sp16 we've been using it a lot in our dj sets building like drum rhythms and little loops to go over the tracks that we've been playing and as we've been doing that we've found quite a few cool little loops and stuff that we've made and like remembered and we'd like want to use them in our tracks moving forward so we've built them in there, a lot of stuff live, and then sort of remember what we're doing. And now we've exported the loops and put them into uh, Logic to, to build a track with. So yeah, the, 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 like I said, the ability to be able to, to do it old school where it means you try things that you probably wouldn't try. It's just more fun to bash around on things than yeah. to be just dragging loops across into uh, Logic. So yeah, it's, it's fun kit, bit of kit to play with. And it's good if you've got um, some of you like some sounds that we use in most of our tracks. So we use we only have three or four kick drums that we kind of vary between. So we've got those loaded into there, and and hats as well. Um, we've got those loaded into there. So you always get our own sound really from. It's it. a lot quicker to mess about with a groove in there than it is to mess about making loops and stuff in there. So yeah, it's been fun to use. So if you if we take that onto onto Logic, you can see that we've got the the hats all exported out and they've just got like little bits of um, echo and stuff there which we've put in there and the shaker it got it's got a really nice groove to it um, so if we just start that that bit there without the uh, you can kind of hear um, in the background as with most of our tracks um, we've got a, a side chained uh, loop which again we've used in quite a few of our tracks just gives a little bit of groove in the background there's always something going on a little bit of back background noise yeah, it makes it sound a little bit older as well not yeah. too fresh there's that and then there's a, a vinyl noise which we have on on all our tracks um, in terms of this in terms of the sound it's just a really old sample that we've had for ages there's no processing on it because it's been processed before and we just dragged it in but in terms of the the actual sound, I have no idea where it came from. Just a just something that we've always had lying around. It is quite weird and quite abstract sounding, but it just adds a noise level. And with the side chain on it, it just adds a bit of groove as well. Um, um, so you can hear that, and then the there's a, a background art playing all the way through the track from right from the word go to the end, which is uh, we've took the bottom end completely out of. Um, and that originally came from uh, the Arturia Prophet, I think it was, it was before we bought the Prophet. Again, it's something we've had lying around for ages, um, and you can hear it sounds it's like an arpeggiated sound, but we've took all the bottom end out of it, all the top end out of it, so it just kind of plays a part in the it's groove. It's like just a rolling groove yeah. that we use for quite a lot of our tracks. Yeah. And it's like in terms of going forward in the track, you can't really even hear it, but it just adds another another level. Uh, so then, f from there, our next port of call is usually the uh, the bass line. Uh, and on this, it was a, a sound that we sampled out of the Prophet Six, 
and it was, which is that sound. Um, and it's not actually that subby because there's quite a, quite a bit of sub in the kick, but the pattern uh, of it is really simple. Uh, get it up for you here. And once we've recorded um, that in, we've just kind of accentuated some of the some of the length of it. We've put it into uh, EXS24, which is still one of our favourite go-to samplers. Really old school, simple to use, uh, and you end up with a really simple kick and bass that work together. Um, the only processing on the bass that we did outside of the Prophet 6 was the uh, added the Fab Filter Saturn, uh, which again we use on quite a lot of our basses and quite a lot of our synths, will just make them sound a little bit older. So you can hear the final bass there. With the kick, they work, like I said, they play off each other really. Like was, the kick has got a lot of sub in it, um, so you didn't need much in the bass really. Um, yes, they took some sub out of the kick, I think. Yeah, because it was too heavy. It's uh, just again, it's something that we've had in the Pioneer SP16. It's we used it on uh, a track of ours called Masai. We used it on a track of ours called Flouter. And it's just one of our go-to kicks for, for these kind of tracks. So when everything's kind of playing, again, these have come out of the SP16, the shakers and the hats. So when you get it all playing together, uh, we'll just... So the one thing uh, in there that we hadn't talked about before is we, we did an exact replica of the bass but on uh, the Arturia uh, SEM, uh, when that decides to come up, there we go. Uh, and it's the exact same pattern as the bass, but it's uh, replicating it obviously a higher, at a higher key. Um, just so when you get the two playing together, it gives a little bit of echo, a little bit of movement, and it creates its own little groove um, together. And then during the track, where the idea initially was, we'll just use a, a little bit of cut off. To add a bit of movement throughout the track. I don't think we actually ended up doing much automation on it. Um, just as you can see on the screen, there's just a, a little just bit. Just a little bit of cut off building yeah. through. Just in, just in the areas where you wanted to bring another element in. So. It gives the ability to do that. You didn't really want to start doing that with the bass, really. On the SEM, there is a, a bit of delay. There's 35% wet on the on that, and you can kind of hear it, um, and that's what gives it its its ping pong in between it. So we set the we set the effect to the delay on the SEM to ping pong, so that it's going from left speaker to right speaker, uh, and it is quite high for a delay, really. Without it. It sounds pretty dull, really. But then you, uh, you know, 35% on that, and it just keeps bouncing between. And like I say, it creates its own groove, really. And you add the the kick and the bass, and then the hats that we got from the SP shaker. Got a nice little, nice little groove started. Um, so once we've got the basic groove going, which is playing now, um, we normally like to once we've got a groove and we want to do a vocal track, we'll go and search through a billion vocals so we can find something that uh, we like because we you want to build the rest of the melodies around the vocal rather than trying to make a vocal fit to a melody is what we always find. So this vocal that we got here is from... Oh. What's that from, John? Uh, it's a, a Rajasthani gentleman, um, which we've, yeah, we're hunting on YouTube and uh, old sample packs and things like that. 
and found uh, found Rajast Rajasthani chant. I think it was. Yeah, we like just sort of tribal chanting things for most of our tracks. That's like the common running th theme through our tracks. So that's just one that we've dug out from somewhere. We've put quite a lot of effects on that. Yeah, there's on that vocal. So initially, um, I think the vocal was. It's quite flat on its own. Yeah, let's pull it up. Um, this was the track initially. So that's the gentleman singing before we've done anything. Um, we played around with the EQ a bit, added a little bit more top end, got rid of all the bottom end because we don't want any of the bass. Put the reverb on it. Yeah, and pit, we actually pitch shifted it down so it, he sounded a little bit more. Uh, a little bit stronger. A bit deeper. Yeah, a bit deeper. And then, uh, as with most things that we do, um, we used Valhalla Room to to fill it out. And uh, That makes it sort of just fill a big room. If That yeah. vocal, if you hear it on its own, doesn't really do much, but with that on it, it just makes it fill the space. We use it on a lot of a lot of vocals, a lot of synths, and like Ben said, it just fills, it sounds like he's being recorded in a big church hall. It sounds amazing. There's quite a big difference there, isn't there, from the original yeah, vocal, from, from what we've done to it. So if we take that off again, you'll hear all the stuff. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really inspire you that much, but once you've done a little bit of work to it, it, uh, it makes a big difference. So yeah, I mean, we kind of built everything else around that. Um, starting with, strangely, we, we a lot of the times we'll start with an arp or some or a synth, but in this case we started with a um, with a pad, uh, a pad like some chords on a pad, which again came from the Arturia SEM, which is a bit of the star of the show in this track, really. Um, the pads sounded like this. We just got a, we added a load of noise to it. They sound a bit churchy, yeah. don't they? Like yeah. they go with the vocal. Sounds like a bit like a prayer track, which it isn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely isn't. It definitely isn't. <laughs> it's like Ben. It just it just sounds again like someone just filming, like recording in a church a hall. Big church, right? Yeah. Um, but the sound of um, of that pad, there's a lot of noise in it. Um, it just sounds really old and really gritty. Um, there's a little bit of delay on it again, 30%, which is quite a lot. Um, ping ponging again, so it just comes between the left and the right speaker. And if you play that together with that uh, bass synth line that we were playing earlier, I'll just give it a little bit of a groove. And the bass itself. So yeah, that in terms of getting a basic idea around there were the first they were the first parts um, from there we we always like to use nice deep um, deep basses on these breakdowns so we wanted to play something that was really simple to go along with the pad um, so we used the Moog sub 37 which is we just a night just basically didn't need to have much tone because we've got that in the pad and the bass synth line and the vocal but in a club it'll just really you'll feel it rather than hear it and that's why we use the moog because you get a nice growl uh, and then once we played with that quite a little bit What's, what's been a game changer for us, we were just discussing this earlier, is um, the ability to be able to uh, use Moog's VST kind of controller. Now, we never used to go over to it, did we really, that no. much? And now we have the ability <coughs> to be able to save presets and access them easily on here it has been a game changer for us. And you can draw the automation in a lot quicker. It just seems a lot more simple now to use, so we tend to use it on most of our tracks, especially for all the deep, the deep basses. Uh, so yeah, to all together with the pad, the the bass, 
uh, and the vocal. You've got that. It's a big orchestral sound. Yeah. So we needed, on top of that, we really needed to start adding some higher end um, to fill top that end yeah, melody. top end melody, really. Um, so we started off with um, we started off using the Prophet Six for the arpeggiator, and couldn't really find anything that worked. So we knew, obviously, we've been using the uh, Arturia SEM, which we said was the star of the show. Um, so we used that on here, but rather than just using it on its own, we started messing around with um, Reactor for effects, which is like a modular based VST, um, but rather than messing around and going by all the cables and everything, you can uh, just use it in the box. So we've been using that on this sound. Uh, I think initially the sound sounded like uh, this. So yeah, it was just a sequence uh, from the SEM. Um, and from there we built that up, got rid of the bottom end on it, which we do on all the synths. We used the Saturn, fab filter Saturn, just to give it a bit of grit. Uh, the, and then this is where a reactor comes in. We were using that as an effect. So if you listen to it with reactor on it, it sounds completely different. It adds, it's, it's all flanging and phasing, but at the same time, which is this frequency shift here, there's a, the metaverb and the cloud delay that allow it to kind of build itself, which you'll hear towards the end. kind of it kind of works as a bit of a makes it a bit more trippy as well yeah a bit more trippy and it's it kind of all works with that church sound and the organ type sound and the vocal so it's we've got the we've got the pad we've got the the low bass from the moog um we've got, got the vocal the vocal we've got the arp bass idea kick going in there and the hats um it was a case really of filling it out Extra bits of percussion. Yeah. So into the percussion, we've just we've used some very old-fashioned sound, really. So you've got some congas, uh, which were initially programmed uh, in the SP16, and then we've dragged them out. We actually ended up re redoing them to kind of fit the groove. The very old, very old sounding again. You don't hear them that much in the track, but no. they just add a little bit of texture to it. You play that alongside the art, uh, that background art, the percussion that we pulled in. It just adds another characteristic to the track, really. And uh, yeah, with the with the pad and the. The one thing that we, again, wanted to do with the, the art works as a bit of a roll towards the next break. So when it all drops in, we knew we needed to add another couple of bits and there's things like, we took some parts out of that vocal that we found and just faded them in. So you can hear that here. And that's just a part of the vocal that we've just to bring in the drop. Yeah, just to bring in the drop and then you can just see there's a, a little fade on it there. Um, and it kind of all works. Coming up to the coming up to the end of that little first breakdown, uh, we've got a couple of effects so which are here. Um, and we've got one that plays on two bars before the drop, which you can hear here, which is a low, just a low pitched 
uh, effects like clap effects, and then I've got a clap that lands on the actual on the actual bar that it drops. It's just to just to build the tension, really. But if you work that with the uh, the end of the vocal, and we've also got a, a reverse crash and a bit of white noise as well, all kind of builds. It's almost like an, an old-fashioned orchestral crescendo, really. Um, the other effect that we also used in this track quite a lot is the white white noise from a Moog. So, if we let's have a look, you can get it from any synth really. Um, you get it on the other thing that's quite good to get it from is the Moog, or the Arturia Moog. So I'll just open that up. You can get it from anywhere, the white noise. And then we kind of sequenced the noise, which I'll show you how we did now. So, what, yeah, white noise you can get from most synthesizers, whether it's hardware or software. Um, we've we used one from, made one on the Moog, but we've also used one from the uh, Arturia version of the Moog, which is the Mini V3. And you can get those, sequence them yourself. Um, and open it up and stuff with the cutter. And it can add a really nice texture to it and sound very self-made. So I was, is in the beginning of the track, but it's also, goes throughout the track really. You can kind of hear it. We've just been opening the cut off, playing with the LFO. And that adds another, it's another tension moment really. So that all together with the pads and everything. Nice little crescendo to go into after the first break. And there's not, I mean, there's not actually that much really going on at that point. You're just building into the groove of the track. Yeah. When you've got big breakdowns, it's nice to have a decent section with a big bit of groove because you get too heavy with the breakdowns, can't it? Yeah. Especially when you when you play that out to a crowd and they go on for ages and ages, you need a good section of groove for people to actually dance to. So after the first initial breakdown, which like teases all the elements of the track, it's at two in, minutes. like what you're going to hear on the big breakdown, we like to come to a bit more of a stripped back groove section of the track yeah. and then re build the groove back in with the other elements to, before you come into the main breakdown. So we like a good decent section where it's just, it's dancing, it's groovy rather than just melodies all over everything. Um, so that's what we do after the first little teaser breakdown. Yeah, that teaser breakdown happens at two minutes and it's only 30 seconds long. And then it goes back into this groove and like Ben's saying, if, if you know, if when you're playing it out and you know that the room's feeling it, you can. We can loop that and yeah. extend that and play it a bit longer. Um, but for, for this track, we think that's all that was needed for this bit. So we've, we've gone back in at uh, 2 minutes 30. Um, started, to tease, uh, started to tease the pads back in after 15 seconds. They create like, quite a bit of tension as they creep in and build up. Yeah. Um, but to add just another little element, we've added um, these notes on top here, which are... Uh, quite simple notes and again they started off, we were trying to do it in the um, in the Prophet 6 but we needed them to be more simple and kind of just top end so we ended up getting them again from the uh, from the SEM <laughs> which I should have called this track really that but it's yeah. they're just really simple notes um, but if you play them on top. Just little notes that are leading up to something to yeah. let you know that there's something else coming for the break now. Uh, that comes with the pad building up as well. And then we there's also another Quite little... Quite creepy, aren't they? Yeah, 
we like quite stuff that's quite creepy and tense and yeah. haunting. Um, there's another little element in it as well, uh, which is this little flute sound every now and again. And we got that from uh, Machine. Um, it's just a sample within Machine. Uh, I can get it from here. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of ethnic sounds in Machine. So uh, on a pack called Rising Crescent, and you can obviously play them however you want. Um, so th they're literally tiny, tiny pieces. And on there, we've gone with our usual Valhalla room, because we wanted it to sound quite big and like it had been played live. We took the bottom end out of it again, as we do with anything other than the bass and the kick, really. Uh, and that gives it that sound. And the only, yeah, these are the only two parts in it. Um, but when it's all building up, it just adds that other moment. Um, it goes really nicely with those high end notes. And it suited the vocal as well, didn't it? To yeah. kind of that's why we went straight into that straight into that pack and we knew we wanted It all sounds quite eastern. Yeah, wanted it to sound like it was from the same recording, if you will. So when we've we've come after the first mini teaser breakdown and we've had a little bit of a section like thirty seconds of like just groove where we're building into things, we like to give it a bit more power for the second section of that groove by bringing in a ride which like just carries you through to the main breakdown play that ride it's quite a tough like techno ride that yeah. which the track's not that tough really it's quite melodic but we like to just add a add in a tougher ride it just it gives a bit more power to the track we've noticed as well when we've been playing live with the sp16 we have a ride that you trigger on there don't you it's during some tracks to try and yeah just make just it try and a bit like, tougher again power power things through and make things just speed up a bit. So we'd, we'd notice from using that, let's try and add one into the uh, into this track and you kind of hear it coming in. I'm quite a slow, the track's quite slow with the pads and the melodies yeah. and that just gives it that extra speed that we wanted. It's great. It's great when you when you are out live and you know the track needs that you can just you bash can it in on, stuff on yeah on, on the SP16. Yeah. Um, so with, with Ben saying about it adds that toughness, there's that ride and adds that industrial kind of sound. And because all our hats um, that we've made are quite relatively thin, none of them are that open. They're all quite closed. That kind of plays the the opposite roll to it and we put it on the off rather than being on the kick maybe which is an old fashioned way of doing it. So that kind of works as our as our open hat really. And saved us having to use an open hat as well which is a bit would have been a bit obvious. Um, and we have a, a sneaky trick as well that we tend to use in a lot in a lot of our tracks which is when you're getting towards the end of a part of your track and you want to kind of slow things down, we uh, we use a, use a pitch shifter on the ride, which you can um, hear. It's like putting the brakes on slightly on the yeah. track just to, to get people into the next part of it. It's quite subtle, but unless you listen to it on its own. But yeah, like Ben said, it's putting the brakes on the track, it's slowing it down to let you know that there's a change coming without having to use a, a big snare roll or a, a big effect. Um, so yeah, if you listen to it all together, we've what we've done here with the kick as well is on our channel there we have our, all our kicks and on the channel above is the exact same sound, but we've just added a single EQ and got rid of all the bottom end at 180. So, listening to it together. And we've done exactly the same with the bass. We've got another channel that's got uh, bottom end taken out 
and if you add the ride to that with that slowing down the pitch going down rather it's just a subtle way of getting into a breakdown without having to do big effects and wind ups to get into there and it allows you to bring something new into the track um, during that section as well we'd, we'd added these two notes which are incredibly simple but they add the tension in the build um, so they were on initially they were on the yeah again the, the, from the Prophet 6 uh, and they were just um, just two notes repeated throughout so if we have a listen to those after we'd recorded them from there we use on the Prophet 6, if anybody has got a Prophet 6, we use this uh, which is a VST that you can buy additional to it and it allows you to control, like the, the Moog one, it allows you to control it from your, com from your computer so you don't have to keep going back and forth and find that's really helpful as well. So yeah, this one we bounced them out. Quite a brassy sound. Quite bassy as well. Yeah, there, there's a bit of bass in. We've got. Um, didn't take it all out because you wanted to feel a bit of it, that, that profit bass sound. But when you play that Quite with. Quite eerie and creepy. Yeah, well, with the especially with those pads. Quite operatic, it's like Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. <laughs> Our yeah. version. Yeah. Which we quite like, quite like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so you can hear this this section of the of the track, you can hear it slowing down. This is at three minutes thirty. Um, the ride slowing down, taking the kick out, taking the bass out. So yeah, when when we've we've got to that part, so I'd left the filter on then. When we got to that part, we've brought the cutoff right down on this filter. So on the main arp. On the main arp, sorry. So we've teased it in at that area, and at this point, we've got the pitch slowing down. You've got a little bit of the white noise from the Moog, which we were showing you before about making your own kind of pattern with it. Taking the kick out, taking the bass out and you end up with this kind of sound. And on the, on the art, we've used a Arturia mini filter, which is a bit of a, I think it's a rip off of the Mood filter, but it sounds the same as. Uh, just to kind of bring it back in again, and you can hear that from the f from the first bar that's still playing those that bass synth line. So the arpeggiator we were going through earlier about um, using reactor effects and using satin on it to make it just sound a little bit older and a little, more, a little bit more gritty. Um, but in terms of the notes, um, it was a case of starting off with the bass of E and it was just playing around until we got chance. We use, used to use something called Satulu to kind of try different patterns um, but we were using the, the Prophet 6 for some of the sequences. Anyway, by the time we'd played around drawing pretty pictures on, the, on this piano roll, this is kind of the pattern that we ended up with. Um, quite simple, uh, it just goes between four notes I think and it ends up sounding like four or five notes in total and using this Moo clone filter from Arturia but I think this, the sound is all about that it's all about those that reactor effects on top of it kind of shifts in and out and uh, gives itself its, a bit of character Is that pan, panned off? Yeah, it, it, it panned off to each side. It ping pongs, yeah. Yeah. But it's it's with everything else playing, it's it's building up to the moment of 
and the vocal drops back in. Yeah, it's all building up to that vocal of the moment and that deep pad. So, which is there. <laughs> kind of what it's you know what it's all about is getting to that part of the track um, which is a minute long and rather than keeping it without anything else going into it we wanted to obviously that that tracks moving around and ping-ponging between the two speakers but it's also there's quite a bit of automation on uh, another part of the track which we brought in which is from reactor itself so Reactor, as I was saying before, it's a modular system, but within the box. So you kind of build these yourselves by adding, uh, adding your own blocks. So this was something that we started off with. And this, it just plays between four notes. So if I kind of... So that bit. So you can see there's only one one note playing there, that's because when you when you're playing a note, it plays through reactor, reactor sequencer, which is this Bento box eight steps. And with, with this, I think it was more we were just playing around with it for hours and hours and hours, just trying different trying different boxes, trying different presets to start off with, and then building from there, as you would do if you were doing it in with a modular system, I guess. Um, but we ended up with something that sounded quite creepy over the top of our art. I'm going to talk about this moving, getting it to move and stuff. Ben. Carry on, yeah, go for it. So, with the modular Thing. I think it's all about playing around with the, the delay, the reverb, and the cutoff. So we've got the cutoff through it is just it's kind of accentuating bits before and after the vocal. Yeah. So that, that it's not just flat all the way through, and it sounds a bit trancy in a way. Yeah. Not making trance, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, we got we got rid of the bottom end and we got rid of the top end on it because it gets quite piercing. So as you can see there, it's all in the middle. Um, but building up to the end, it's you've got the cutoff coming up. Kind of changes the pattern of it with all the effects. Yeah, with all the effects, it changes the sound. allowed us to have a little breather before the main yeah, drop. Sometimes you'll go straight into straight into the drop like with snares and effects and everything but we kind of wanted to build up to something give people they think it's going to come in and it's like it doesn't it dips back down again and we, we build it up again quickly before it drops in. So to, to do that a little bit the, of a surprise. Yeah with the with the tension we built up the white noise again but there's no, there's no like snare roll or anything at that point. That was going to come in that little gap, so you can hear. Yeah, at this point we've not really had the art playing while the kick and the bass has been going, so um, that was kind of the moment to fire that back in. Yeah, fire everything in, so it all kind of makes sense, if you will. You've, all, you've been building up to that moment. You can see the filters just building back up on the art, all the effects from that reactor block. And then you can see it all goes clean. So you've got the cut off there, and these are all the all the effects from 
those reactor blocks that we were showing on it before, uh, building up to that moment and then dropping off right at the drop so that it goes back and it's nice and clean when it actually it creates another tune of, it, of its own really. But then with the bass that we mentioned earlier and the kick. Quite a dra dramatic effect by doing doing it that way and dropping out the building up to like you're ready to come in and then just fading it off and, and doing it again. It makes it a bit more dramatic, we think. That, yeah, te it's teasing, isn't it? Teasing yeah. people. So that was that's kind of the main part of the track. Well, because we because we've built up the way we've built up without dropping into the track, we didn't use any snare or anything to, to give it a real punch. So when you've dropped off and like, so you're kind of doing another mini build up within a build up, it needs that extra punch. So we stuck a big snare on it yeah. <laughs> just to just to give drive it home that second time before the kick and the bass and everything comes back in. Yeah, this is... But it's not a massive snare actually. It's, is it? It's not our longest. It's not our longest, no. no. definitely not. It's just a little short one. But it just does, gives that a, that tension, just that extra bit of tension, it helps build it. You can see it here, so it's... it's again, it's just to let people know it's coming, isn't it? It's quite a small snare for those, that, actually. Yeah. Just a little teaser one. Yeah, we've used the, we've used the white noise that we were mentioning before. We've quite. used that more than the snare, I think, there. On that white noise, there's... Uh, unsurprisingly, there's the Valhalla, and that's what makes it bleed. So big. Yeah, it makes yeah. it so big, and it makes it bleed into the track as well. Uh, and there's also Sound Toys, um, Echo Boy Jr. on it, which is, you can hear it. it again, just allows it to bleed in, so it doesn't just sound dead. I think for, for most most elements that we want to stand out, we use that Valhalla on, don't we? So it really yeah. fills an area. Um, if we go to, after this point, it was a case of getting back to those vocals, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we've had the big, um, it's like a very big breakdown, that really. Well, not very big, but very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Operatic, like it's a very dramatic breakdown with the with the pads and the melody and, and, tension. and the vocal and everything. So we come into pr pretty much just the kick and the bass and a bit uh, of the melody. Yeah. We don't come into too much. We like want people just get back to to stomping really and dancing away. So that's when we get to to this point. That's when we start bringing everything. There's another kind of little. But then once the, yeah we've had that drop, you want to bring everything back and give people like a second wind of the breakdown. Yeah. Within the track. And you can hear from, from earlier in the track there's like those those clap hits. Um to the yeah, two bars before the before the drop. You bring so the ride back in to give it that power. Yeah, the ride comes back in again. Uh, and then you've got the, the little flute that we were showing you from the machine. That's there. And that vocal, that part of the vocal that we've just faded in. And it's again just without having to use other effects, we can build that tension by using parts of the track. And take it by, uh, as well, by taking the kick out and putting it on that channel that we've created using the. Uh, using the EQ with the bottom end taken out. So after we've come back in, after all that tension has built up, we we got to the point where the ride was coming back in and, and everything was back in. Um, we've, we've got that for 30 seconds, but at the end of there, we've took the kicks out, we've put them back on that channel that's got no bass on it, we've took the bass out and put that on the channel that's got no bass in it, no bottom end in it. Um, and what we're trying to do is get back to this main vocal 
and as you can it's, we're doing a little breakdown that's not a breakdown within the groove of the track to yeah. get back into the vocal so the uh, profit noises come back in um, for a bit of melody and uh, as you can see we just drop the kick out drop the bass out a little bit of a snare roll and then that vocal that we've teased in all the way through the track kind of plays out with like, all the rest of the stuff at the same time and that's the main part of the track yeah with, with all guns blazing yeah. And in there is all the hats that we've got from the SP16, the shaker, the, all the closed hats, a um, couple of claps, one really thin one, one really thick one, a um, couple of those congas and stuff, um, the bass synth line, literally everything is playing at that point other than the SEM, the three notes, which comes back in in a minute. That plays through 7 minutes, 7.20. Drop the kick out, drop the bass out to get to the end. Pitch the ride down. Pitch the ride down so it's slowing down again. Into the point where a DJ would usually mix it. And then we brought those noises back in just because it's a little bit different. It's a nice, they sound nice in the mix with another track just when yeah. you're fading it out. Or getting out of the track. And then there's that uh, that flute there, that flute sound again. And this this bit is like we were saying, this is the part where the DJ would be mixing this part of the track. So it's keeping in things that'll sound nice in a mix. Towards the end of the track, um, we've just finished off with a, a that clip of the vocal that fades. So it'll mix quite nicely. But if we look at the arrangement of the track, which is probably the most important part of this track, um, we kind of arrange. Sometimes we'll start. Well, we start with the groove, or we'll mess about in the SP16 and get grooves going and get melodies going and we get loads of bits going and it's quite messy but we kind of arrange as we go along don't we yeah as we're building stuff in like a lot of people will get the whole track just in one section and then arrange afterwards but we kind of do quite long sections don't we we do that f yeah we'll, we'll get the groove going uh, in there and for those like 16 bars if you will but then like Ben's saying we'll, we'll think oh something else needs to go there or something else needs to go there and we can do that as we're going on so you've got at the beginning of this arrangement um, you've got a, a minute worth of that groove that we were playing earlier which has got the, the the kick without the bottom end and the bass without the bottom end all playing along uh, there's a minute worth of that before that um, that section of the vocal rises up and the white noise. I think a minute is the easiest way to mix it isn't it as well? Yeah well we, obviously we, 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 we're making tracks for DJs to play, they're not like to be stand, like, stand alone tracks, the, the DJ tools at the end of the day. So we, we kind of, you've got to have a minute of just the bare bones just in there before you get into like the meaty part of, of the track so it is mixable for the DJs to play. So there's a, at that point, place for a minute before we bring a clap in. Uh, there's 30 seconds there, and then at two minutes, as we were saying before, there's that mini break and that mini teaser. Yeah, we don't have like a set way of, we, of us doing that. We just start putting elements of the track in, and then we might think we've got too much in, so we take bits out. Yeah. And you just feel your way through it, really. There's not just going, oh, that's a minute, two minutes, do that, do that. We just sort of, meander through it however the track kind of re they arrange themselves a lot yeah. of the time don't they with the elements that we put into them and then yeah that, that's a drop at 2.30 there's another 
uh, between there and there, um, there's a minute worth a of groove. Right of groove. And then there's a, uh, from there to there's 30 seconds worth of like building up to the breakdown. Um, the, one of the parts that we didn't mention before that we've, we kept the hats playing um, in the kind of build up to the breakdown. Um, and one of the parts that we did with it is how to get out of the hats. So if you've got hats built, they're still going. You don't want them just to come to a stop. Yeah, so we've um, we've got the now famous Valhalla room and we've um, put the wet up on it, just put the mix up on it. So they kind of fade out like that. And bleed into the rest yeah, of the bleed into the rest of the track, out. put the decay up so that it bleeds into the rest. Kind of acts as another white noise then. And uh, that's a nice way of getting out of the groove and going into the breakdown. And then, as we were mentioning before, with, in terms of the arrangement wise, there's, there's numerous different ways, isn't there, where you can yeah, get from that to... Yeah, I think with, with this one, obviously, we, we, we built up to... There's, there's two breakdowns within the breakdown, if you will. So we didn't intend for that, we didn't plan to do that, we just built the track up intending for it to drop at that point, yeah. if you just play that, that section before it builds. So we could have built that up and put a snare in and everything and then dropped into the main track there. Yeah. But we kind of, the track itself, the melody and the way the, what's it called, the, the reactor yeah. made the synth go. We, we did a second little breakdown within the track, so that's not really us thinking of that. That's the sort of track dictating to us how we're gonna make it. Yeah, it didn't. So if I just cut that bit out, you can hear it. it doesn't. It just doesn't work. It doesn't really work. It didn't. It didn't have the tension. It didn't have the impact that we wanted no. it to. So we decided to dip it again in the breakdown and then do a mini breakdown give it the tension that we wanted. And that's how you get that, that art building back up again. That's why we decided to keep it in when it dropped. Yeah. And that's kind of just us stumbling through it. That's not like a plan that we come up with. It's again, the track dictates to us what we're going to do in some ways. Um, but yeah, like, like Ben said, it, your elements dictate to you what you can, what you can and can't do with your, with your arrangement really. You don't have to follow a certain a certain pattern. Yeah, just feel your way through it. Thanks for watching us break down our track Indica on Yoshitoshi. You can catch up with us on our socials at OC Inverd.